to Battleground Toronto now in the race for the mayor's job. Please welcome back one of the top names in that race, Ward 16 Councillor, mayoral candidate, Karen Stintz. Karen, Hi. good to see you. You've filed your papers, you're rip roaring ready to go, um, and you've got an, an, another entrant that filed on the same day as you, John Tory's in the race. And I want to ask you about his candidacy versus yours. When we last had you on the program, we obviously knew about the incumbent, Rob Ford. Mm -hmm. But you and John Tory seem to be, to be, by and large, appealing to a similar voter. Uh, disabuse me of that notion if you like, but tell me how you appeal to that voter. Well, I've got a track record at City Hall that I've built over the last 10 years that I'm very proud of. I've uh, done a lot of work with, uh, with City Council, and I'm in a really good position to deal with the issues that are facing the city, such as congestion, such as building safe neighborhoods, making sure we keep our taxes low. And those are the things I've been working on for the last 10 years, and those are the things that I want to do as mayor. I, I wonder, as it's, it's a long campaign, you know that, and everybody knows that, and, and we're excited to cover this long campaign. Um, but I wonder at some point, too, whether it, it's useful, and, and maybe you're already doing this, is each mayoral candidate, if there are going to be three or sort of four big names towards the end of it, it's going to be a case of how many councillors everybody can line up. Because obviously, as you know, you know, mayor's just one vote. You've got to have council in order to get your program through. So to fight, fighting for those councillor endorsements could be kind of important. Well, I've worked with my colleagues over the past 10 years, and we've worked together on a lot of initiatives. And I've said to my colleagues, listen, I just, you know, get reelected, and my job is to bring a vision to council that will support the city and bring a plan to council that will fix congestion, bring a plan to council that will build safe neighborhoods, keep our taxes low. And those are the kinds of things that my colleagues want to see as well. So I don't have any concerns about getting an agenda through because it's going to be the kind of agenda that's going to improve the quality of life for the people in the city. Uh, let me ask you about the transit issue. Um, I, I think that if I was living in Toronto, if I was living outside Toronto, I'd be looking for Torontonians to sort this one out. Uh, because getting around, getting to work, getting home, uh, you know, that's got to be just the top of everybody's minds. Um, so the, the big one, obviously, Scarborough LRT versus Subway. Where are you on some of these, these transit issues? How's it going to work when, uh, when you're mayor? Well, these council made decisions around transit, and we made a decision to extend the Bloor Danforth line. We made a decision on the Eglinton Crosstown. And my, when, I, when I'm running as, as mayor, I, will, I defend the decisions the council has made because we cannot go back and talk anymore. The people of Toronto want to see transit built. And part of dealing with congestion is transit, but there's also a bigger piece of solving transit for cars, for buses, for bikes. And so we need to stick with the transit plans that we have, keep the shovels, get the shovels in the ground, but also think about congestion more broadly. I want to ask you a little bit about the tone of this particular campaign. And it, it does look like it could be a bit elbows up by the time we get into it, probably because of Mayor Ford. But I want to talk about a tweet that you put out yesterday, and it seemed to make perfect sense to me. Here's the tweet. I'm like you. I have a mortgage, kids, one car, soccer games. Let's make it better. And, and I read that one. You know, that's the kind of thing politicians often say. It's a great way to for you to introduce yourself to voters. But then all these people started shooting off at you on Twitter going, well, that's, I'm not like that. I'm not any of those things. What do you make of this? And this, this is the way social media works. But um, why would those things be a disadvantage? I mean, how do you talk to people who think it's weird that you're a mom with kids that goes to soccer games? <laughs> well, I, I am. That is me. But I, I recognize that not everybody has a mortgage and not everybody has kids. But everybody is dealing with pressures in their life, whether they're financial pressures, getting around, trying to get from A to B. And that was the, the, the thrust of my comments, that I understand what it's like to live in a busy city. I understand what it's like to be dealing with pressures, financial and otherwise. So it was a, a bit of a surprise. But again, social media, sometimes things can get taken out of context. And, but my message is the same. I, I understand what the people of the city are living, are living with and the kinds of problems that they have. And I want to be part of the solution. And yet the plain fact of any political race is you're not going to get 100% of the votes. You're going right. to win if you, you get 40. You might, you might be the mayor. And so, OK. There are going to be some voters you're going to have to say, that person, I'm just never going to get, you know, that individual, uh, that demographic maybe to vote for me. This one, though, does seem to be the one that, uh, you know, probably owns a home or aspires to own a home. There's a lot of those kind of Torontonians. And those would be the folks who may have voted in the suburbs for Rob Ford. And I don't want to get this into a downtown versus the sort of the exurbs and suburbs, but give me a sense of the kind of voter. Uh, are they like your, yours? Are they, are they own, uh, homeowners? Are they commuters? Are they transit users? W where do you see your core voter? Well, they are. And they're, well, they're people that have chosen to live in the city. And they're people that are frustrated right now because it's hard to get around. They are those that want to use our sports fields and our play spaces and our green spaces and find ha and are having difficulty accessing them. There are people like myself that have pressures and they, they want to keep taxes low. And so th that's the voter that I'm targeting, and that's 
what I've been fighting for at City Hall for the past 10 years. Let me get your thoughts then on the current crisis the week of the week so far with the mayor, with Rob Ford, and that is his much publicized spat with the chief of police, um, uh, Bill Blair. What, what do you think about the, the mayor's response in this situation? Well, you know, I, the mayor is, has ongoing challenges and, and issues, and I, I don't think picking a fight with the chief of police is, is, is a good thing to do. Uh, the chief has a, an important job, and he's well-respected in the city, and you know, I support the chief, and I, I want to make sure that he knows that he has the support of council because he is helping us keep our neighborhood safe. Let me just argue with you on one point. That per, there is a suggestion that perhaps in this particular matter, investigation of the mayor, that it may be wise for the Toronto police force to call in the help of the OPP, Ottawa City Police, just another police force. Yeah, I can't comment on that investigation because, again, I only know what I read in the newspaper. Sure. And so... You know, at a point at which it might be appropriate for the OPP to be called in, I'm sure that that's what the chief will do. Well, Karen Stintz, good luck in the long campaign. We'll Thank be keeping you. an eye on you and hope to talk to you again. Thank you. Bye.